Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back of this Teardown Lab. First, a little bit of a mailbox unboxing. And one of the things is this, and I can't show it to you all in one because it's so, so, so very long, but it's an Amstrad CPC 464. And it is something I've wanted for a long, long time, believe it or not. I had budget for one and I ended up buying a Spectrum Plus 2, which kind of looks the same, but isn't the same. But I've got one now. And a lot of these items are to do with that. So we're gonna open them up. Because the thing now I've learned, you know, I've just, by the way, I've just been playing a lot of the MSX. And I really like the old MSX. I can, I kind of think that between the MSX, the Amstrad and the BBC Micro, because I just kind of want to get back into programming on these platforms again. But I kind of just want to do it on the actual platform as well. I think between all three of those, I'm gonna have a very busy uh, winter, especially with some of the electronic projects I've got in mind with those. Oh, there's a letter in here. Let me just pop this letter out while I have a look. It's, oh, okay. It's from coolnovelties.co.uk and it's a, an invoice for £2.49 for a drive belt for the cassette. So I just kind of assume the cassette player in that's going to be naff. The one in my plus two was a bit rubbish when I got that one. If, if you recall, it was a long time ago now, um, that when I tried to play some tapes, they wouldn't quite play reliably, but I swapped the belt and it worked fine. And the old belt had a bit of a kink in it, and that's all it was. And I suspect actually it's the same belt. So I could have bought them in bulk. They do sell the belts in bulk sometimes. Ooh. Hello, hello you. Right, so the next thing is, uh, its description says memory cards for $7.98. It was similarly priced actually, it wasn't massively expensive, but these are 32 gigabytes memory cards. So I've sort of risked them on eBay, just sort of, you know, you see them on eBay, these sort of cheapo ones. The problem is sometimes, one, these adapters can be really crappy, but actually they, they're not too bad, they look all right. And two of the memory cards could be unreliable, but recently I've had so many like even legitimate proper memory cards fail I'm, I'm kind of like, you know They're all probably made in the same uh, factory So frankly, I'd rather pay a couple of quid for one and see how it goes And the reason I'm buying these small size ones is that I've got a lot of projects like the Pi tube in the the BBC Pi tube We've got the uh, 1541 Commodore Drive. We've got the Game Boy kind of uh, Supercard things loads of little gadgets like that where you don't need a massive card. Oh, and the other one is that, of course, Odroid Go. And I've got in the Odroid Go like a, a 64 gigabyte or a 100 and, uh, you know, 28 gigabyte card, which I've nicked out of like a, a CCTV thing, or one of the car recorders. And uh, yeah, it just does not suit it. You don't need that much for storing those ROMs, do you? Ah, cool. So this thing was another kind of cheapo gadget because I've got a problem with the sound card in my PC. There's something weird. I think it's a driver issue that in my PC, when I play audio through the speakers, it's like silent. And then there's a big like click, like as if the amplifiers are just getting turned on and then they start to play. And I'm like, why is the amplifier chip not on all the time? And I went through all the power saving settings and couldn't see any issue. But then I just remembered these things exist and they're just really dirt cheap. Um, USB sound cards. They've got the headphones and micro. I'm not even going to open it. They just look. It's just a blob. You can see it's a clear casing, and now it's so ubiquitous that there's just a blob in there. It's not even a real chip. There's nothing it needs. You just plug that in and it goes. So get one of those. If you've got problems with your onboard sound card, don't mess around anymore. You just want to hear this digital sound right. Pop one of these in. It's not like the olden days where you had like to just choose your sound blaster uh, AWE. 32 or something you just don't have that decision to make anymore now this brings me on to the next Amstrad part and I can't remember who I can, I can see their label but I can't remember what they're called oh yeah retro computer shack there we go we'll put their card on and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be happily shouting out retro computer I don't get any of my stuff for free by the way I just buy it all and it does happen to be a lot of the stuff comes from retro computer shack and Ian pretty who I think pretty much makes these things and it's, it's a good job on them to be honest with you um, you know it's pretty good quality in terms of the fit and finish the SD car uh, very scarped um, connector block and things like that they're okay they're pretty good and they're actually very reasonably priced so I think for the money definitely visit Retro Computer Shack and this is a wire for that same Amstrad because when I got it 
it didn't come with any wires. And what's nice is I know it's even it's not just the wire here, it's actually giving you like an instruction. Look what it's saying. Switch off the Amstrad computer and TV. Connect the SCART lead to the computer, including the audio lead, which is that one. Um, select normal aspect, not widescreen. Well, I mean, that's up to you. Switch on the TV and the computer, and that's, that's kind of cool. Well, what this is then, to show you, it's a SCART adapter, but it's kind of been modified or it's been built to this interesting spec where this part plugs into the sound. So I'm guessing the sound on the Amstrad must have been potentially coming out of the, uh, the unit itself, like the BBC Micro, you know, um, I'm not sure. I think it's because in in that day the uh, monitor it used to come with a monitor, so that's why you need all this, this, this cableage going on. So that plugs into the computer, and here you see this is a through for the power, so your power brick, instead of going straight into the CPC now, goes into this, and then this goes into the CPC. And I think it's because it needs, a, it's getting like a parasitic current, so that it, or voltage rather, no, probably not much current, so it can actually just switch the TV on. So you only you turn on your device and the SCART channel automatically switches. I think that's what that's going to give you. So that's pretty good. So stay tuned for sort of future videos where we're going to have a little play with changing the belt, I think, and then just firing up the Amstrad. I mean, it's, it's a virgin experience for me, so I've not really turned on an Amstrad CPC before, but I'll be doing that and maybe if they ever arrive i did order some of these r4 or r6 i think they are clones for the ds i would like to try those out because i've got quite a large collection of games for the nintendo ds's and i do have a few you know a 3ds i kind of think I'm, I'm at that point where i'm tired of carrying cartridges around and you know with this i've got a switch now and now i have to have a little baggy with the switch with all of the switch games in it which is kind of annoying and the only reason I do it with the switch is because I don't trust the online stores with Nintendo just yet it's not like Steam where you know it's kind of been there for a long time and will be there forever with the Nintendo things when you go from the Wii to the Wii U to the GameCube well, to the GameCube that was a step back to the GameCube and then go to the Switch or the 3DS or the 3 uh, or the DS um, XL or whatever you've worked on none of those things seem to just work across that platform so I, I kind of don't trust them so uh, at least I get the option with the older generation DS's to actually just consolidate my libraries onto a, a backup card. So there, we'll be trying that out. Okay guys, have a great hot week ahead of you and thanks for watching.